Okay, let us start. Uh, so just, uh, so in the, in, in, at the end of the last lecture, so I introduced the explicit formula uh, like for WRT environment, which essentially defines it. So I was a bit in a rush, so there were some questions. It was a bit, the formula was a bit messy. There were some questions, so I rewrite it. And so just what is the idea? So we take the color Jones polynomial of this frame linked, and uh, so you've seen the uncolored Jones, like uh, the, the color Jones polynomial of unframed links in Jake Rasmussen lectures, and I told you how how it uh, how it depends on the framing. So the dependence on the framing is very is very simple and explicit. You just uh, have some extra factors, and so what do you do? You uh, you take this a bunch of uh, so, so you calculate a certain sum of all colors. So for each link component, you assign a color, and uh, each color runs in the sum from one to k minus one, and uh, so you get some weights, and then you d you introduce some denominator which uh, normalizes it in a certain way. Uh, so one part of the numerator is essentially do the same thing, but you replace uh, your link by a bunch of uh, unknots with framing plus minus one, and their, their number is B plus, the number of positive eigenvalues of a linking matrix, and uh, B minus number of unknots with framing minus one, and then you add also normalization corresponding to the number of zero eigenvalues of, uh, uh, of the linking matrix. So let me make a, a uh, couple of remarks. So the first remark is that, uh, so normalization here, so the standard kind of normalization in the, uh, when people talk about WRT environment, which is denoted by tau, is such that uh, on a sphere, it's equal to one. So this was part of the exercise. And, uh, but uh, there are also a another standard, kind of an another natural choice of normalization, which I will denote by Z SU to K, and uh, so it's essentially the same thing, uh, but you multiply it by uh, uh, the following factor. And uh, so it's this, it has a property which was also the result, the direct result of the one of the exercise is that uh, it's normalized such that, now it's normalized such that on a S2 times S1 is equal to one. And this is the normalization is more natural from uh, TKFT point of view. And uh, as we will see later in the lecture, the uh, WRT invariant uh, can actually be understood as a evaluation of a certain TKFT uh, on a closed three manifold. And uh, so, uh, so people usually use this uh, normalization. So in this normalization, it behaves well under the connected sum operation. So on the connected sum, it's just a product of the uh, WRT invariant of the corresponding manifolds. But for this, it's an, it just uh, it will it will also be a product, but with extra factor. So the remark number two is that uh, this can be generalized. So now, so we define it as a function from positive integer to C, but this can be generalized uh, to, uh, to a function from rational numbers to C. And uh, what, what you do is, uh, so if you take a rational number and represent it as a ratio of R and K, where so that R and K are co-prime. Uh, the result E will be given by the same, for essentially the same formula. But you instead uh, uh, replace, so here you do replacement like this, but now you just want to replace Q by E to Z to pi I R, oh, okay. Sorry, to be precise, it's a, it's a map from integers modular, from rational numbers modular Z, of course. Okay, and it's actually can be generalized to kind of, uh, to what is called, if double is invariant, it's to any 
uh, modular tensor category, which I will talk a bit later. Okay. Any questions? Uh, so another remark is that uh, it was motivated by uh, more physical and not, and not so mathematically rigorous approach uh, by Witten. And uh, so in this approach, the double layer invariant. So now I will be mostly talking about the invariant, which is normalized like this, which is different by this uh, factor, simple factor. So kind of the physical definition of this uh, of the value of the invariant on a closed serenity three manifold is given by a certain pass integral. So this is. This part is uh, mathematically ill-defined in principle, but I will comment on this later. So over a certain space. Uh, and here I integrate exponential of two pi i k minus two uh, John Simon's functional of a. So let me elaborate a bit on different integrants here. So, so uh, A is a connection, uh, one form of, uh, of our SU2 principal bundle over M3. So any SU2 bundle, so SU2, SU2 bundles, any SU2 bundle over MC is trivial. So it's always trivial. So that's why we can always, we can globally uh, choose a connection one form to describe a connection on this, uh, on the principal bundle. And uh, so then the uh, John Simons functional is defined as the integral of M3 of a trace of A dA plus two third A cube. So the uh, connection one form I understand. So since I, I can I can globally uh, trivialize my bundle, I can just understand the element of uh, the, the one form valued in uh, uh, SU2 uh, Lie algebra. And uh, the space which I integrate over is uh, uh, so is a, is, a, is a space of all uh, connection one forms on M three modular. Uh, gauge equivalence. So the gauge equivalence is uh, so I can identify A is another A, uh, which is uh, related to each to it by the following explicit formula, where G is a function from M3 to SU2 group. And uh, so this uh, the Simons functional is uh, well defined. So it's uh, it's a well defined function uh, from A S U two to uh, to real numbers modular integers. Uh, And uh, so this is because it's, uh, so it's invariant under all gauge transformations which can be connected to a trivial one. But if you take a gauge transformation which is not connected, it cannot be connected to a trivial, to, to, to a trivial map to identity, 
uh, then it uh, can change by an integral number. And, uh, but the exponential of the thing is, of course, since k is integer, integer here, uh, uh, the exponential is, uh, is, in wire, is, is a well-defined function on the space to the complex numbers. Okay, so again, this is uh, uh, ill-defined, but I actually uh, kind of can make, so in the next lecture we'll talk how can one try to make sense of this integral. So the idea is that, so I mean, suppose you have some, so the problem is that the, is there, it's not clear how to define a measure on this infinite dimensional space, but uh, so usually, I mean, the point, if you, if you calculate some integrals, like of this, of this, for example, of this form, some complex integral, I mean, so, some integral over 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 real line. So you actually don't like calculate, don't calculate it by by, by the definition you, using measure. So you do some contour deformation and you you do some sort of residue. You 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 calculate it you calculate it using the singularity structure of this of this function. So essentially, one can try to define it by just using the kind of uh, using the topology property of the space, which is uh, can be which can be mathematically well defined. Yes. Uh, well, I think you can get uh, any any integer. Yeah. Any other question? Okay. Good. So and uh, well, but the point is that uh, from this motivation is that uh, it's actually is a, is a what is called partition function. So is a partition, what is called partition function of a, a TQ of T. So this, is a, so this is how you usually write a partition function of quantum field theory. You do some, you calculate a pass integral over fields. And the fact that the, the, here the action, the, the exponential of the action, so action is a function of the field. The fact that the, the action doesn't depend on the metric means that the theory is topological. And, uh, but the, uh, the, uh, the, the TQFT, the, the quantum field theory kind of is it's usually describes some evolu it's evolution in the time. So you can see the manifolds, particular direction, kind of want to understand the time direction. So we also should be able to define this, uh, the, 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 the kind of, what, is, what, do we, what do we associate not to a closed manifold by some bardism? And uh, so the bardism can be through the time evolution. Uh, and uh, this can be, uh, so if one understands TQFT this way, this can be formalized. So the definition of TQFT has already kind of appeared in the lectures. So Chipran mentioned, uh, and also in the lectures by Soren, it was mentioned. So let me uh, kind of remind you what exactly what I mean, will mean. I will remind you the definition and also fix kind of notation by what will I mean by TQFT? Uh, so an n-dimensional TQFT uh, form is a The symmetric monoidal functor uh, from the so will you, I will use uh, the word bordism instead of cobordism. So I mean there is subtle difference, but uh, in this case, uh, uh, I mean there is there is some difference when one, for example, studies the generalized homology or cohomology here associated to this. But uh, here there is not actually much difference. Uh, to the category, so I will, I will in my in my right hand side the the, the category will be a, will be a very particular category. So it will, be, the, it will be the functor will be valid in the category of vector spaces of complex numbers. And uh, so in principle, of course, one can consider any field here, but at some point it actually will be important that this field, for us, that this field is algebraically closed. 
And on the left hand side, so let me uh, clarify what uh, I will mean. So what, what do I mean here by the uh, category of uh, uh, n-dimensional bordism? So objects are, uh, and of course I will be interested in the case n equals three, objects are, So I can, ass I can assume smoothness, but it's not, not, it's not in the three-dimensional, it's not really important. As smooth uh, uh, n manifolds, so n minus one manifolds oriented. So for me, this will be always oriented and uh, closed. For now, and uh, and morphisms. So morphism uh, from uh, uh, let's say m uh, m one to so do, okay. Let me let me denote it by Holmes. Holmes uh, from m one to m two are uh, also uh, so oriented. So again, I can assume if smoothness, but it's, I cannot just consider them as topological manifolds, oriented uh, and manifolds uh, M N such that uh, there is explicit, uh, there is explicit choice of, uh, so in the, in the topological case, there is choice of homomorphism, just a choice of homomorphism. And in the smooth case, I need to choose a diffeomorphism together with some neighborhood, uh, such that homomorphism from, uh, uh, so this should be homomorphism preserving orientation to M1 bar, where bar means reverse of orientation to and disjoint union to disjoint union of M2. Okay. Yes, yes, the choice of homomorphism is extra data. Exactly. Yes. And uh, so more, more I can see that this modular uh, homomorphisms uh, preserving uh, boundaries. So I can see the homo, uh, I can see the model homomorphism which preserves this homomorphism to the boundary. And uh, so, uh, so what is the uh, what is the symmetric monoidal? So the symmetric monoidal functor means that the functor which respects symmetric monoidal structure in these uh, categories. So, so I, I'm not going to go. So, roughly, very briefly, the symmetric monoidal structure. So on uh, so on ve so let's first uh, consider the right hand side on vect. So there is a notion of uh, of course tensor product. Uh, so monoidal structure means there is a notion of a tensor product, and here this is a, will be a standard tensor product of vector spaces, R C. And moreover, there is a canonical there is a choice of uh, isomorphism to a, a tensor product reverse, and there also. Uh, identity uh, object. Okay, in general, I will denote it by one. So in this case, this object is uh, is just my field C, and uh, so it's object. It's also it's a, it's a cubed with. Uh, uh, so the tensor product with this is a cube with a canonical isomorphism to the V itself and uh, swapped around. So there is a data which consists of these isomorphisms. And uh, so on the left hand side, so if I take two objects, 
the the tensor product in the, in this uh, in the sense of the monoidal structure is uh, this joint union, and of course we have a natural canonical isomorphism to uh, this joint union swapped. Oh, sorry, there is there is standard homeomorphism from, from this to this, and uh, so the identity object is uh, empty space. Well, in the, I'm saying in three dimensions and lower, it it it, it doesn't really. Well, the it, it, uh, yes. Well, you have. Well, you, you, of course. Uh, yeah. I mean, the statement is that. Uh, yeah. So any for any homo, there is a unique. Uh, the unique smooth structure. If if I take my manifold, there is a unique smooth structure. On it. Mm -hmm. hmm? Up to dimension three. <coughs> yeah, up to dimension three. Um, are we requiring that our isomorphisms square to the identity? Uh, so, 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 so. Like an isometric structure, like the isomorphisms that split our tensor products, are we requiring that they square to the identity? Yes, yes. Here, yes. This is why it's uh, called symmetric. Uh, okay. Yeah, the statement that, uh, well, this kind of is inverse. Just if you apply the another, I mean, it's inverse to itself. Well, in, in, in a sense that if you apply. Okay. So, uh, okay, so as a, like before proceeding to three dimensions, so as a warm up, uh, uh, consider two dimensional TQFTs. So this was uh, briefly mentioned uh, by Cyprian. And uh, uh, so there is a statement that uh, if I take a Frobenius algebra, so now I, here I can see the algebras over C, this, may pro this produces me a 2D TQFT. And uh, and this map is actually a one to one correspondence and uh, so uh, so how how do we construct this uh, so if i take uh, so if i take a frobenius algebra v so as a uh, so, so now i have i have a state how how do i construct this response so, so i want to uh, produce some Functor ZV. And uh, so, first statement is that ZV of S1 is equal to V as a, just as a vector space. And uh, now, what is, the, what is the additional structure on the, on this V? And how does it uh, uh, correspond to? Uh, uh, how, how does it correspond to the properties of this functor? So first of all, there is a, so what is the data of uh, Frobenius algebra? So first of all, there is a multiplication. So it's a map uh, from uh, V tensor V to V. And this map will correspond 
the following bordism. Uh, and uh, second uh, part of the data is a unit. This is a map from C to V, uh, which uh, <coughs> correspond to the following bordism. And uh, the third part is, uh, well, let me write it. And uh, so in particular, one, which means, I mean, the, the unit map means that one is maps to the unit uh, with respect to multiplication. And uh, three is a core unit, or one can call it trace. And I will do by trace map. It's a map from V to C. And uh, it will correspond to this cap. So this is enough kind of, this is the, the whole data you, which you need, but you, you require some properties. So it's not arbitrary uh, collection of mu, co-unit, epsilon, and this trace map. So first conditions is uh, associativity. So you want uh, uh, so for example, if, if I consider, well, let me, let me draw it now, the bordisms in the vertical orientation. So if I consider a uh, tensor product of a, tri of a triple of V, tri tri three copies of V, I can first uh, multi apply multiplication to the first pair uh, to get some element in V tensor V, and then I can apply uh, the multiplication here to, to get some element in V, or I can go the other way around. I can apply identity times mu, and then apply mu here. And uh, so this diagram should be commutative, and this is reflected in the, in the, in the fact that, uh, uh, so how do I, how do I realize this uh, maps, the composition of this map is a composition of bordisms. It uh, goes like this. So the identity uh, the identity uh, morphism, the identity morphism in the bordism category is just, uh, bor is a bordism which is given by the uh, product uh, of the manifold with, uh, with an interval. And this is, uh, of course, homeomorphic to the following, to the other composition of bordisms. Okay. And the second property, which the second condition which we need is that uh, So the, the, it's required that in the Frobenius algebra, the, uh, uh, the following uh, composition, trace with mu, which is a map from V tensor V to C, so there's some bilinear pairing on V, is non-degenerate. And this follows from the fact that we can explicitly find its inverse. So, So this composition corresponds to the following composition of the pair of pants and the cup. And, uh, but of course, if we, we can find it inverse by composing it with this uh, bended cylinder and then identity here, and uh, this is the same as identity up to up to uh, homeomorphism. So indeed, uh, this should be, this part, so it should be non-degenerate. Okay. So we see that there is a kind of the, the structure of uh, two-dimensional TQFTs is uh, encoded by some algebraic structure. And so we want something similar in three dimensions.
Any questions? Yes? By twisting. Well, I can consider the topological QFT as a kind of as a supersymmetric QFT with uh, just supercharged arcs trivially. So, kind of in this sense, uh, the statement is becomes uh, trivial. I mean, I can always consider two QFT as kind of uh, like twisted supersymmetric. QFT in some tri in some in some tautological sense, just all supercharges suck trivially, like all states are already BPS states. But uh, uh, well, I don't know maybe you mean something more, uh, some some. Well, you, yeah, I don't. But uh, at least in this sense, is the question is yes. The, the answer is yes. Yes, but it can be uh, it, ca it can be uh, obtained using this data. This data is enough because you can. Uh, so if you want to construct co-multiplication, so let's see. You uh, uh, so what do you do? You you can start with uh, some sort of uh, multiplication, and uh, uh, then. Uh, uh, so first you can uh, so you can you can apply so first you can you can define this thing and you can apply a cup kind of and you can express co-multiplication uh, using uh, sorry no no just don't you can express co-multiplication using uh, a multi using multiplication and this uh, and this kind of uh, kind of co-pairing and the co-pairing can be understood as inverse. Uh, so the co-pairing is uh, fixed by the condition that it's it's uh, it's inverse to pairing, which is uh, defined by the by this composition. So you can you can uh, unambiguously determine co-multiplication using this unit co-unit and multiplication. Any other question? So there will be in the, in the exercise there are some problem there are some problem which kind of uh, about some simple example. Yes, but co-multiplication, I can, uh, can I can constrain requiring that this in its inverse, it's an inverse of multiplication. So, so, sorry, what do you mean? No. So, okay. So first, uh, let, let me. So first, I can I construct the the pairing, right? This pairing by by composition of multiplication and uh, and the trace or co-unit. Good. And then I construct uh, this. Then I can construct uh, a co-pairing, which is a map from C to V tensor V, by 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 the condition that this is uh, identity. And then I use a composition of uh, 